Okay, so let's get started. So welcome to the glossary meeting. Oh, Noah's there. Um, so welcome to the glossary meeting. I think it's going to be rather short, at least from my end. Hey, Noah. Um, I was on vacation for two weeks and the other week on a conference. So basically all the time gone <laughs> since the last one. So, but uh, we do have some news. Uh, okay, so we do have some news. So Ihor from the CNCF will be helping the glossary a little bit. Um, in the future, so very excited to get his support. I used to work with him back when we wrote some uh, CNCS, um, no, um, Newstack articles and he was reviewing it and it's really great to work with him. So I'm very excited. Um, I'll be meeting with him next week just to give him like a quick update for where we're at uh, and like how, what would be helpful uh, on our end. Um, and yeah, so, and the other thing that I'm really excited is the tags are finally implemented. The tags, I mean, this is <laughs> going on forever. And so now when you see here, uh, you can either uh, go to uh, a specific term or you can browse by tags and then you can have like just one tag or combine them. Uh, and then you'll see everything that has those tags here and then go and see the actual term. Um, and the idea is basically that uh, specifically, like if you're looking for something specific, of course you're gonna use this, but especially for people who are new and like, if you wanna get started, it's like, okay, here, these are all the fundamentals. Like if you're starting, you should probably kind of get a sense of what this is, because if you don't know what a cluster is, a lot of the definitions will not make sense uh, and so on. And then maybe you wanna have fundamentals in architecture, right, and and so on. So, um, I think it's very helpful. I'm very excited that uh, that is now live. Um, we also added a who can contribute si uh, section in our glossary just to uh, make expectations a little clearer. I think like a lot of people think they can contribute but are not quite there yet. So just to make cl clear, like what you need, where, where you need to be at to actually contribute uh, to the glossary. Uh, hopefully that will help because I think it might have uh, led to a little bit of frustration because people think they uh, are able to contribute something, don't have the background, and then there's a lot of back and forth and it's frustration for everyone, right? It's frustration for the contributor as well because they they really wanted to participate. We have a lot of people who are eager to participate in the cloud native ecosystem and contribute, uh, contributing to open source. Uh, but like managing that expectations and making clear what's needed is really important. So hopefully that helps. Uh, and oh yeah, so that's actually, I think that would be more in the maintainer discussion. So my, um, um, let's think about, um, remind, uh, remind me of that, uh, Seoko, cause I think it should be part of the template. Just check people that they have read it. Uh, but we can discuss this, uh, further down. Uh, again, that's all I had, uh, three weeks basically gone from the last four weeks. So I don't know, <laughs> there's not much. So back to, uh, over to you, Seoko. Yeah, before over to the localization update, I just to mention that uh, take filters. Uh, I'd like to say thanks to Chris Abraham and James Hunt who implemented the take filters uh, functionality. Uh, they bring, brought uh, this function to uh, our glossary, glossary project. Uh, so I hope to mention them. Okay, uh, let's go to the localization update. Uh, as you recall the last, last uh, meeting, I requested to uh, all localization uh, branch maintainers to update their branches uh, by revising uh, onto the latest main branch. 
And as you can see, uh, uh, many of uh, localization team uh, applied, I mean, completed this task. So I'd like to say thanks to all uh, localization maintainers. Uh, uh, we are still waiting for uh, PRs from Rude and uh, Arabic language. So uh, in case of Rude language, uh, we already have PR, so it is work in progress. And uh, in case of Arabic language, uh, there is no response yet. So please uh, take a look the issue. So those two branches are remaining tasks for me. Okay, uh, next item is about uh, to sharing uh, some additional uh, script and strings uh, that need to be localized uh, in TOML file. So if we check the link, uh, Kathleen, could you open that link? Uh, Thanks. Yeah, uh, by the, the, the tag filtering implementation, we added more uh, strings to the request to be uh, localized. As you can see, those new strings should be localized by uh, localization team. But uh, before work on this localization, you would better to rebase your development branch again to reflect those new TOML file. So I think that's all from the localization update. Is there any question regarding those two items? Yeah, yeah, I think most of uh, localization maintainers understand what I mean. Okay, I, I think uh, that's all from my side for the update. And maybe you can go to uh, individual language team Spanish, maybe, Carol? Uh, yes, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh... Well, uh, I think I put the update that we are trying to sync our branch that is Deb S, the Spanish, to the main at the end of the month. We are trying to, to sync. Uh, I think it's the second time that we, we did it. So we are trying to keep this, uh, this control about our syncs. So, yeah. I think also I think we have um, a pull request about GitHub actions about try to automatize the stage issues that I think some uh, someone uh, already reviewed it. I did it, it. I applied the changes. And, and yeah, and we are only trying to apply it in the Spanish branch to testing this 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 GitHub action. Okay, I think it's that's all. I don't know if you have questions. Okay, thank you, Carol. Uh, uh, let me let me check your PR regarding the automation for the uh, stale issues and PRs. Uh, actually, we shared it uh, in the previous meeting, so. Uh, most of them understand what the PR uh, implement. So let me let me check your PR. Oh, thank you. Yeah, your your review it was great that I applied this this enhancement that you suggest. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
in Germany. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we reorganized our workflow a little bit. Um, we had, as you can see, we had a uh, lot, a little bit problems to uh, translate a lot of terms. And we are just three people, so we had uh, we made a meeting where we talked about how we can uh, translate more um, terms and uh, find our flow a little bit again. And yeah, I think till the next meeting we can um, have a little bit more news, more uh, terms translated. That's my hope, and I'm optimistic to do in this. Uh, since last time we have just one new term merged and two are in review and uh, we have still 11 published terms uh, same like like, like uh, last month and um, we've nearly finished our blog post so i think all sex all sections are filled um i also already reviewed it i don't know if the other two still in review to review everything but we are very close to that the, to yeah. say it's finished i will awesome. i will also have a have a review again and then um i i guess catherine you will um probably go over it again to have some some wordings um improved or something some editing and then then we were good we are good to go i guess awesome yeah, yeah. we need to promote the team's work yeah so yeah, yeah, we and also we stay trying to find new members for our team, so it's also something we talked about in this meeting. And um, yeah, maybe we we have some some uh, meet up in our city and and uh, cloud native meet up, and we want to uh, promote this localization there. Okay. Yeah, meetups are, are, I think, great place to do yeah, that. And maybe the blog post is like another resource that you can share, right? Because it's like you, you say it and then like people can read it later on. It's nice to have several options to kind of, uh, yeah. I know that's always a problem finding contributors, but um, yeah, we have to keep on it right? <laughs> and try. Um, okay, great. Uh, so now it's uh, like open discussion time. Uh, someone added the brainstorming to promote glossary contributors. Oh, it, has, uh, it was me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I opened a uh, uh, discussion item brainstorming to promote CNCF glossary contributors as well as maintainers. Uh, uh, I, I think we can use this discussion to gathering and bring uh, folks who have who have ideas regarding how to promote uh, contributors in especially for CNCF cloud native glossary. So please feel free to add any ideas if you have any uh, mm -hmm. nice pro promotional ideas so it is both just for sharing this uh, discussion item yeah you can find one idea from uh, victor you can see some uh, ideas from victor in the uh, comment and yeah, yeah. I, I think we don't have to uh, discuss today, but uh, feel free to check a uh, new comment here and add more ideas here. Yeah, and uh, maybe David, when you go to uh, the meetup, you know, and like if, if that was successful or what was successful, that's something that you could add here, right? Hopefully you find something that works uh, and resonates. Uh, and then as we try things out, it would be a good place to um, um, gather best practices, right, that we have learned. Because, um, yeah, it's, 
there are a lot of contributors who are not the perfect contributors because they're not there yet. And then like, but having the people who are, who have the knowledge, they're really, so it's like, it's, it's a really uh, difficult situation. Um, it's like, I don't know. Well, we had a few, yeah. Well, we had a few ideas that I think that we can add here too. I think like we had some, I'm going to look into the agenda and I think that there was like a, folder that I started um, I'm gonna add those things in here too so there is that's like our social source of truth to say right uh, and uh, we should keep building on that and maybe make it like a like a not a regular point where we kind of remind people that it, that is there and if they have um, any new ideas um, because otherwise it's gonna people are gonna forget and then uh, six months later we're like oh we're all missing contributors right yeah. Anything else? I'm yeah. oh, sorry. Oh uh, yeah. If, even though if you share any idea in Slack, I will bring it to the discussion idea so that you can uh, easily check. I mean, get our ideas from there. Okay, that's all from my side. And Oshi just wrote, uh, can, and by the way, you can just unmute yourself and, and just chime in, uh, feel free to do that. Um, we're not that much of a big group. So um, if you can write a blog, uh, a blog about the pro process, progress, do you mean? Uh, I mean, those are like what, what's like currently ha happening, like from where we got uh, started and what is the current progress right now in the glossary? And we can write a blog about it and publish it on social media and like in the Q weekly newsletter. You mean like where the the glossary as like a whole what, is, what right? Is, Not yeah. What is currently happening in the glossary open source project? Yeah, yeah. If there is a volunteer to write that, we can do that. Um, um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like if we like. With the blog post, it has to be like I don't know, like we we could. It's a it's it's a it's an idea. Would you be willing to get that started? Uh, we would have to see if we have enough like things that are interesting to say, but probably we do. We just have to think about it. Yeah, I would love to because this is my first meeting and I have just started, so I have to look into glossy project more. Like what's happening right now? Okay, great. Yeah, I I didn't recognize your name, so uh, welcome, Osh Oshi. <laughs> um, <laughs> Thank you. So on which team are you? No, no, uh, I just started, uh, like I just created my first issue, like uh, can we uh, add a new team regarding admission controller? So I have to start with the localization team. And oh, I'll... okay. Yeah, but with a localization team you said. So which- uh, I'm from India, so uh, mostly I will start with Hindi localization team. Okay, with the Hindi, okay, good. Um, okay, great, so welcome. Um, and yeah, um, feel free to get started and then we can like all like once we have like a draft, we can build on that and then um, I'm sure there are like cool things that we can say and just we just have to think about it right now from the get go I but it's it's a good idea we should we should try to get the word out. Yeah. Um, anything else for the open discussion. Yeah. I have one question, one doubt, <laughs> when you are, were talking about new contributors, mm -hmm. because uh, what is the relation about the glossary with Kubernetes? I don't know if we have hyperlinks to the concepts, because, uh, for example, I, I receive a, a lot of questions, I think common questions about how to start it, uh, be a contributor in Kubernetes. And my answer is that if you want to uh, you are a beginner, you can start with the glossary because it's more easy that the going to the Kubernetes and it's like I is some con so, some connections between the uh, the people that is want to, to start to contribute to go to the glossary first because they they have the attention on Kubernetes. Right? I don't know how is uh, if we have some. Yeah, that's my question. If we have some relations that hyperlinks. We can reuse it inside. So we are separate projects. 
Well, we are we are kind of separate, but not. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're all part of the same ecosystem. We're separate in that, that way that our teams don't necessarily collaborate, but we have we're also joined at the same time as a lot of the the, the teams localization teams are also the localization teams for the Kubernetes one. But there is no coordination or anything. Um, I mean, I think like interlinking is good the only thing the only issue is that the kubernetes stocks is very advanced right so uh, and our goal is to make things very easy so i don't know like whenever it makes sense we should link to it but i think like probably a lot of the things that are in the kubernetes uh docs and glossary are too advanced for what yeah. we're looking for so there are probably not too many opportunities to do that or maybe it's too detailed for where people are at so i mean we should definitely do it it's just like i i think that's more the issue it's that um the glossary is more really like an and not for contributors but for people who want to learn it it's an entry-level resource right that is for people who have no knowledge yet or are just new to Kubernetes, uh, to Kubernetes, not to uh, the cloud native, uh, to cloud native in general. And then that will help them to read more technical articles, right? So uh, I feel that's kind of the... Yeah, but I think in, yeah. Yeah, in some level that as you say, we always have beginners, even in Kubernetes that are trying to read and they for example, they don't know how is data center or all the terms that it's already the glossary and that's, we started unleash the basic hyperlinks to the glossary from Kubernetes. I don't know if we have this initiative, it's only that mm. that's what You mean linking from the Kubernetes docs to the glossary? Yeah. I think that probably makes more sense because there are probably more words that come up in the Kubernetes and the Kubernetes glossary that are also covered in in our glossary. Yeah, like um, common definitions that is there that uh, it's not in the in detail inside of Kubernetes, but we can refer to our glossary because we we explain especially for the new people and, and we have some connection and also some more attractions for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like win win for everyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how the I know we have people from localization teams, but like who, like how does the actual, the English Kubernetes glossary work? Silko, do you know anything about um, that? I mean, uh, well, they have in the, oh. in the GitHub, né, the maintainers, but I don't know if you, you mean who is the responsible. Yeah, if they have a, I'm sure they have a Slack on the Kubernetes. Yeah. Well, I know some of them because I participate in the <laughs> Kubernetes documentations. But uh, if you want to to start this uh, this kind of issue mapping or hyperlink uh, to work together, is is uh, that some words, common words, like we have all the definitions in the glossary. We started to go to the yeah, this Actually, yeah. I think if you know people, it would be great to ask if they have an interest in that. Like if they if they would be open to that, I think they would be, but let's ask them. And that could actually be a issue that we could create for real beginners, right? Because it's like going to the Kubernetes docs, finding words that are covered there and then hyperlinking. Because mm -hmm. that would be like a real beginner's uh, contributor task, yeah. right? Because it's like, uh as a beginner coming up like writing a definition is really difficult but like linking to that that's like something that people could do um so i'm, I'm sure we would find um volunteers but i would want to ask them first <laughs> right um if i mean i'm sure we could do it as like as well but any thoughts from anyone else i think it's a good idea uh, i actually a long-term contributor for Kubernetes website, Bigodocs. And I, I actually already shared uh, uh, our uh, tasks, I mean, our status of, I mean, uh, cloud native glossary to uh, Kubernetes website. 
community. So they aware of it. And maybe we can just open up here to add uh, our grocery uh, website address in Kubernetes uh, website glossary page. Maybe you can simply add a link and uh, some description for cloud native glossary. And based on that PR, uh, the reviewers and approvers, and maybe uh, Sigudoc's lead uh, will join for the discussion. So maybe we can start by opening a PR by, to add the links. Maybe Carol can help opening a PR or I can also open a PR. Uh, yeah, definitely I can talk with the Kubernetes maintainers about this and what they think if we can collaborate and, and share in the Slack about this and try to officialize this with an issue pull request if they everyone is no? Would you like to start the PR as well or that so cool suggested, Carol? Yeah, well, I could help in any uh, initiative that if you think is a good idea, I, I, I can. I think it's help. a great idea. I think that way it really makes sense. And it would also help to get because more traffic to our or like raise uh, oh. awareness about the glossary. If you think about when the people started, it's going to Kubernetes, they are new people that also don't know about so many terms that we are helping in the glossary that mm -hmm. makes sense, help especially for me. And also it's new contributors for us. <laughs> yeah. And it is very technical. So it's like, if you're new to, to Kubernetes and want to read the docs, it's pretty overwhelming, <laughs> I guess, right? Yeah. Um, Paulo, oh. you're free to say. Yeah, yeah. The, this this is a very good question from from point from Carol, uh, and uh, in my opinion, we can think about uh, we can extend this for our project because, for example, you have a PR to start the contribution for observability. We have many other projects talk about observability, Prometheus, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, not only Kubernetes is documentation requires uh access or use glossary to define uh, uh key points to uh, uh, more uh, how can i can i say uh, global globally uh uh concepts then uh, other person also needs so maybe i don't know if we, if there is some kind of uh, governance or talk with other the other person, but maybe the, the CNCF team, Catherine, glossary uh, contributors, I don't know, can start a, a kind of a relationship with other projects uh, through TLC. I don't know, I'm, I'm just saying that. We need to avoid, first of all, we need to avoid duplicate and duplicate efforts and more, we need to avoid also not only duplicate, but uh, have a divergence of concepts. For example, if someone from a uh, contributor for Prometheus write uh, something about observability in general, and not about Prometheus per se, but in general about observability, then someone from Thanos write something like uh, similar uh, about observability. This kind of uh, Global, uh, general, sorry, general concept could be uh, could be uh, touch in, in, in glossary and uh, be uh, replicated in all projects documentations to avoid uh, the, the, there is a relation relationship between the projects. As I said, when you when you look to as Carol said. 
uh, when you look at Kubernetes, you have much more documentation, you have much more uh, uh, terms, concepts, etc., and help to this relationship between the both projects, documentation for Kubernetes and glossary. But uh, if you we are growing the glossary with concepts and terms, general uh, terms. Uh, we will touch uh, concepts that other projects are working and create the documentation and define concepts for them that may be not only a duplicate, but also uh, has difference, uh, is don't converge to a same thing. So I think that we can maybe the 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 group can uh, start to talk to think about something uh, as a best practice for documentation that always bring to the general concepts to glossary and things for documentation will consult it, open PRs, create concepts, general concepts in glossary. And use a specific project or the specific project terms in the documentation and make a reference. I don't know if this makes is this makes sense, but uh, it's a it's something like uh, like Carol said, extending what Carol said. Yeah, I think the linking is definitely something that we should be doing um um i don't know if into like but between like things that are like uh open source and uh right that as we said we had that discussion no to proprietary pages and uh um mentions um i don't know if i followed completely with the what you meant with um not i mean there's going to be duplication always because people are always going to write uh their own definitions or how you know but what we want to do with the glossary is that there is like one source of truth or one thing where everyone can contribute that is like easy and that is uh, uh um um project and product agnostic and so on and it's like and everyone is welcome to contribute there and i think like it should it should definitely link to, uh, we should like different resources should link to the glossary as well, because like a lot of people are new uh, and we wanna make sure that they, as they learn about it, uh, can find uh, good and, and easy to understand definitions. Um, okay, uh, if that's all, I would like to move to the maintainer discussion, if that's okay. Unless someone has something else. And okay. Uh, and that basically uh, is like if people want to drop off, uh, that uh, is totally fine. You can also stick around. Uh, we merged two of our meetings and I also have the maintainer meeting here. So uh, there are some internal things that we need to discuss. Uh, so yeah, feel free to do <laughs> to uh, get a few minutes back or uh, just stick around. Okay, Seoko, you had something about the number of approvers. Uh, yes. Um, recently, Spanish team requested to add uh, uh, Rodolfo, if I say his name correctly, I'm not sure, but uh, try to add a new approval for Spanish team. But uh, Spanish team already had four approvals already. So uh, in order to add uh, additional approval, they need to replace uh, uh, one of the approvals from Spanish team, Liar. Uh, so uh, I just thought, uh, uh, even though some approvals are not uh, active during few months, uh, I think they are still valuable 
uh, contributors so that I uh, uh, hope to discuss somehow how to keep them in their position. So that's the reason why I brought extending the maximum number of approvals for each uh, localization team. Currently, it is four, but my su suggestion is uh, encouraging it to five so that uh, localization team can have more approvals, even though some of them are not uh, very active. But it is a way to keep them in their position and make them come back again. So I already shared this message to uh, maintainers channel. So I hope to know the uh, opinions from Noah and Catherine. I think she yeah, I think already it's... agreed on that. Yeah. I think it's fine because it's like, first of all, I, I think it should be up to the localization teams like as well to decide, right? Uh, we definitely do not recommend for people to have 15 uh, approvers because it gets messy, right? But I think sometimes if they, I think it's good to say like restrict it to a lower number at first and then as they are in their flow and know how things work because sometimes maybe someone is gone for two months or on a project and can't do but they know they're going to be back you don't want to have to downgrade like to like put them like remove them and put them back again if they know they're going to come back right um but i think so and if one person is gone for uh and you only had for a few months and you only have three approvals it gets difficult with the because you're really depending on these two other persons and if they are not available for a week then you cannot merge something so it becomes a bottleneck so i think it's fine um i mean i think each team should just will discover what works for them right no what do you think yeah i agree i agree on that um the localization teams should should um, decide that on their own and um if they think that that it Will be beneficial because mm. it doesn't scale otherwise or they are blocked otherwise then it's totally mm. fair i guess maybe what we can do is like when a team is new we restrict it to the four or maybe or the new one would be five and then we say like okay after six months you know like once you kind of because like sometimes when they're new they want to make everyone you know because everyone is excited and every but you don't know how engaged people are and then maybe after six months or more um then you will figure it will you will figure out who is going to be doing more work and less work and then they can decide who should actually if they should include more people or not um because i think the reason we uh restricted is because at the beginning everyone is excited and everyone wants to make everyone right uh uh a approver sure, but that i that I, I, changes, I surely yeah. agree with you so initially four is enough, and uh, based on request from the localization ongoing localization team, we can extend the maximum yeah. number of approvals. Yeah, right. Yeah, once they're established, I feel like they should decide what they want to do. Right in the beginning, we restrict them just a little bit, but then it's like, okay, you f you know best what works for you. So okay. Okay, thank you. I will share it to uh spanish team and the pr thanks awesome. uh, uh yeah yeah next i can yeah yes Catherine. no go, go ahead you put it in there because mm -hmm. i have opinions here <laughs> oh okay yeah next i think is about new term suggestion for public cloud you can check that issue uh, contributor suggested the public cloud term as a new term. And the reason why uh, contributor, the, con the contributor uh, opened that issue is uh, the contributor is actually working on defining uh, virtual private cloud. And the contributor thought 
uh, in order to define the VPC, uh, public cloud term is required. That's the reason why the contributor uh, opened that issue. Uh, actually, uh, in my opinion, uh, current the VPC, virtual private cloud term, uh, can be defined regard regardless of the public cloud, private cloud, and any other cloud. And I think uh, if it is just cloud computing, then we can, uh, I mean, uh, we can just refer the cloud computing for uh, defining VPC. So yes. I actually commented on that uh, issue already, but I hope to hear uh, other maintainers' stories. And yeah, I, I already know the Catherine's idea. Well, I just saw like, because VPC was still awaiting triage and people were signing up front. We never kind of decided if it should be part of the, and it was like, oh. <laughs> Because it was like, didn't we? I don't remember deciding that it should be part. So it's like the first discussion, the first thing that we should probably, I think we discussed it. We started talking about it, but then we never come came to a conclusion. Um, and then yeah. so I think uh, we yeah. already uh take the, the this triage accepted for VPC term. That it was. I just looked and am I crazy? <laughs> oh. Yeah, we already gave. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Then I was like, I was looking somewhere else. Okay, so we did. Then it's wrong. Forget yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I remember correctly, the uh, reason why I added the agreed to add VPC is that uh, VPC itself is a little bit hard uh, term to understand for beginners. but Actually, we are very open use that term, even though it the term itself originated by AWS maybe, but these days many cloud service providers are using that term in as general term. I think that's the reason why we agreed to add uh, okay. the British term into the glossary. Let's just get rid of this then, because this is wrong. Yeah. I um, so my opinion on it is um, while public cloud is a very um, um, basic concept, um, I guess it would it would be fair to accept it as well. Not not necessarily to to define the VPC one, but if we said yes to VPC, then I guess it would be fair to also say yes to public cloud even though it's super basic, but um, I I can imagine that that people want to see um, how it may be, what problem it solves regarding to a private cloud, for example. I mean, so maybe having this this, this thing and the, the contract between those both um, in our glossary would be a nice thing. So. Um, I guess my 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 feeling would say to approve it rather than to not approve it. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit like data center, right? Yeah, data center is super basic, but we still yeah. kind of included it. Yeah, right? what 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 I think what I think it's it's a little bit a little bit more advanced than data center because um, I don't know data center is data center, but but public cloud you have to public and the private part so you can really have this um yeah to have the contrast of those but it's just that's just, just what i think about it i mean i have no strong opinion um yeah just a gut feeling more or less yeah actually we already have a cloud computing definition mm. uh from that definition i'm not sure what kind of content can be added in new public cloud term, like uh, Noah said? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. sure. So, 
Yeah, so cloud computing basically. Cloud computing, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so cloud computing ba basically refers to public oh, cloud when we. Yeah. yeah, 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 okay. Enough, yeah, yes. I see. Okay. <laughs> so uh, my concern yeah. is actually okay. about what to say in public cloud yeah. position. Um, yeah, that's fair. That's fair, yeah. Cloud computing. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have in mind that, that the cloud computing one was, yeah more describing the public cloud uh, but yeah um, with that information i guess we would rather not accept it because you're right um what what would we say about cloud compute uh, about public cloud which is not already included in uh in, in the existing term yeah paulo please feel free to share your idea Can I can I can I talk or uh, yeah, give it just so one? Just yeah. yeah. No. Okay. So, but I will send it by in in, in No. Sayoko so just asked you to just invited you to talk. <laughs> Go ahead, Paulo. Okay. Uh, I I'm trying to access issue one seven two seven to look at look around what is is the the suggestion public cloud. But uh, uh, there is a very, very good definition coming from NIST, North America Institute of, of Story and Technology, that could be referenced or used in public, private, or any, any kind of uh, definition of cloud. There is something that is disconnected from any provider because come from a standard institute. You can be, could be used in this kind of a general concept. I can send the, the number of the definition for you in this slide. Um, okay, thank you, Paolo, for the, this definition information. And uh, actually, I also aware of that uh definition from list in usa and yeah if we define uh cloud uh, public cloud as a new term in glossary then uh maybe the way to define the term is a little bit different as you can see we have three sections what is this problem is addressed and how it helps. Uh, it is a little bit different with just the term definition provided by NIST, but I know it is very good uh, reference. So also, uh, as Paulo said, uh, public cloud is very well uh, established term already with very uh, short and simple term. So the reason why I'm concerning adding this cloud, uh, public cloud term in glossary is that uh, what can we add more additional information regarding the uh, cloud computing, uh, public, public cloud. Okay, would it make sense to maybe have this cloud computing slash public cloud or something like that? Uh, actually, uh, cloud computing is paradigm or concept, yeah, and it can be deployed for public way or private way. If we uh, implement yeah. cloud computing in public way, then for for the public service, then we call it public cloud. And if uh, some uh, companies are building their own cloud computing inside, mm. then we say it is just yeah. private cloud, right? Yeah, I, I have a suggestion to make. Um, what if we just just um, extend the cloud computing, um, what it is section, by just adding one or two sentences stating that you can realize the cloud computing concept either through um, uh, using a public cloud provider like 
AWS, blah, blah, or like using something, um, a private cloud provider, like, I don't know, what is it, Weespear or yeah, we're, however we're they not, open no stack examples or whatever. we decided, so. Yeah, okay, okay, then. Yeah, so just public I just said the examples. Cloud, yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, and, and then we could, we could, we could like reference, um, reference the VPC um, if we want in that in that um, cloud computing article or the other way around, which is reference from VPC. Yeah, I like computing. that. Yeah, I agree. That's a nice idea. Okay, then I, I think uh, we all agree to not accept public cloud new term, and we uh, improve the term cloud computing so that it can somehow show a uh, deployment type of cloud computing, yeah. public cloud and private cloud. Okay, I, I guess our uh, maintainers agree. Uh, yep. is there, yeah. Uh, okay, I, I guess we are all agreed. Thanks, and we can go to the next item, Catherine, maybe? Uh, yeah, so I updated observability as a reminder. Observability, the definition was kind of a mix between the property and the tools, right? And so observability should be the property because like observable systems can be observed via different tools. Uh, so because it is a um, um, property, it only has one section. Uh, I used, like most of it came from the definition that was already there provided. It's just like slightly like formulated that it is a property that allows you to do those things instead of saying, because it was like a little bit of a mix. And I feel like it must be clear that one is a property and the other ones are a tool that leverage that property. Um, um, so yeah, uh, that would be, uh, for technical, ready for technical review. And I put our back. I know, uh, Noah, you've been, uh, you started that, but it kind of got a little stale. So if we could uh, kind of get that. Yeah, one. I just, I just, um, um, uh, dragged the task on my to-do list, um, and increase the, the priority. Uh, like I said, I'm, um, I have a hard time to catch up with all those things, but um, it's on my radar now uh, again. So I will see that I finished that one. Okay, cool. So, because um, there yeah. are not too many that need to be brought to the finish line, but it would be great. Yeah, too. I didn't have it on my on my on my radar, uh, so I forgot about it. Yeah. Okay, cool. My Anything else? Extent about the observ observability definition is that, I mean, uh, maybe we would better to differentiate uh, observability and monitoring itself. I know the term itself is uh, property, can be property, but uh, people try to use Observability is more advanced way than the just monitoring. So uh, since uh, in cloud native domain, people try to use the observability term in kind of uh, advanced monitoring way. So maybe uh, you'd better to say something about relationship with monitoring, just monitoring. Uh, it is just my uh, simple opinion. And I try to uh, comment uh, Catherine's uh, improvement. In, uh, I mean, try to comment, review uh, your PR so that uh, some of uh, our how to reflect, I try to check how to reflect the differentiating the monitoring and observability. But you have not yet, because I'm like, you will, you mean? Yeah, yeah, comment. I will. Okay. I will, yeah, I will yeah. Okay, great, great. Right. Yeah, I think that that would be good to kind of have that, because it mm -hmm. is similar, <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, so. Yeah, just, just add your comments or suggestion and I'll weave that in. And then um, 
I also asked if Ihor could review it. So uh, Noah is off the hook maybe, and then can look at Arvac instead. And um, um, so that we can get that updated hopefully soon. Anything else? Okay, I think we can wrap it up. Thank you for, oh, we've got a new visitor when we're just wrapping up. <laughs> Thanks for those who uh, stick, uh, stick around, uh, even for the maintainer uh, session. Um, so thank you, and we thank shall you. see you in a month. Yes. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.